What's up everybody, Yasin Izami here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about Zillow. What's happening with that company? Why is it making news headlines? Is it going to potentially trigger a real estate crash in the US market and its possible impact in the Canadian context? We are going to talk about all of this. Stay tuned till the end. Let's dive in. So for a common person to understand Zillow, it's just like a retail real estate website where you go into the website, search for properties in your neighborhood, contact the realtor, and that's how you purchase a property. But in 2019, they went into this house flipping business. Now you might be wondering, 2019 was an ideal time for anybody to go into real estate market because since then we have seen what happened in the market. The market exploded pretty much everywhere uh, in the world, you know, just like Canada, we have seen the market has gone bananas, 30, 40 percent year over year increase in terms of prices. That's pretty much happened in the U.S. as well, you know, because U.S. is a big market. So not every single state has performed similarly. But uh, at an average level, the country has seen an immense uh, acceleration in terms of house prices since 2019. So Zillow went into this market right before the pandemic. So ideal time for anybody to make money out of real estate market, but they struggled, they failed because their business plan was flawed. Now they came, when they went into the house flipping business, they came up with this TAM, total addressable market. If you're familiar with business proposal, you know, you always have a targeted audience, your target market where you can assess your opportunity size. So they were coming up with this total TAM of entire housing market in US. And whoever understands real estate a little bit can definitely say, okay, not a single house on a street is same, um, let alone the entire neighborhood. And yet Zillow was looking at the entire time, which means entire US housing market. And they were basically assessing the house pricing uh, and predicting the house price growth based upon their own algorithms. Now, anybody who does house flipping business understand every single house is completely unique and different. On the same street, even if the builder you know, you know, builds similar houses you know, side by side, every single house is unique and different because they may have you know same amount of uh, bedrooms or washrooms or uh, same square footage but their lot might be different right their elevation might be different their their um, layout design for, from internal is also different their sunlight elevation uh, and, and the angle the way the sunlight you know comes it comes into the house is different so there's so many things that can make a house unique and different and you cannot predict the price just because you think this whole neighborhood will perform similarly. So that's what they did. So they actually built a model and trying to predict the market and assess the evaluation of the property by using these mathematical models. And reportedly, a lot of people have said that they have seen Zillow paying way over market uh, to purchase properties and they were buying those properties in bulk, like a large amount of properties they were buying at a much higher price. Now, what happened? they actually struggled to you know follow through their business model because in the pandemic what we have seen the construction cost has significantly uh you know increased not only because of the construction material but also the lack of labor who was supposed to be going into those properties renovating it and then flipping them uh, back to the retail market. So because they were not able to complete the renovation the renovation cost increased significantly and they completely misjudged the price actions in terms of the way they should be, how much price they should be paying to purchase a property at first place, and then also predicting the price growth, they completely screwed it up. And now they are realizing their business plan was completely flawed, and now they are exiting that market. The other reason their business plan was flawed because house flipping is a good business at the local level. So if you are local in a neighborhood, you know the neighborhood very well. You know the house quality, the construction. Uh, you know, quality, uh, you know, the people locally, like, you know, electrician, plumbers, you know, contractors, excavators, uh, you have relationship with the, you know, private financing. So, you know, the local neighborhood and the market dynamics. When you try to scale this up at a national level, this is where you actually completely lose it because you cannot 
uh, control the entire country's market by uh, negotiating with these, you know, uh, electricians and plumbers and, and, and contractors, because that's pretty much very local human capital intensive business plan. Uh, when, when the companies like Zillow and Open Door, you know, come up with this house flipping business at a scale of national level, this cannot survive because you are actually competing with a local uh, you know, investor whose whose job is to basically flip the, those houses uh, because they know the market very well. They know the construction industry very well. They have relationship with the local, you know, uh, plumbers and electricians and contractors, so they can control and manage the projects in a timely fashion. When you run this at a global level or national level, it becomes so difficult to manage and keep healthy from profit perspective. If you look at these companies' financial information, you will realize. They were making revenues, but they were hardly making any income or earnings because their earnings were pretty much negative consistently. It's a pretty human capital cost intensive game, and you can only do it when you manage things at a local level. Now, that was the news you know, that came out last week. Recently, they, I also saw a news where they're dumping around 7,000 houses in the market. It is causing a lot of trouble uh, in the news media and a lot of you know retail investors and pretty much home buyers are, are kind of uh, making their thought process and saying okay it's going to potentially create a housing crash so I, I just want to demystify some of the myths and confusion about that so first of all yet their business plan was flawed and they they were purchasing a lot of property but they were actually purchasing from an average Joe and Jane and then renovating it and selling it to another you know ordinary person on the street now what's gonna happen is the amount of houses that they're going to dump they're not going to put them into the retail market like mls they are basically trying to sell those houses in large bulk uh to you know companies like blackrock and those blackrock companies they are famous in basically absorbing the inventory because they buy and hold because that's their business model right they buy and then put them onto the rent they never sell back into the retail market. So this is going to cause short of supply for sure because now Zillow is not flipping those houses back into the retail market. They are basically selling them to this big you know, corporation like BlackRock, which is famous of you know, absorbing the inventory. Historically, we have seen in US market, we had a lack of inventory, which is causing the price pressure up. Now we will see even more lack of inventory because the amount of houses that Zillow has purchased now is going to be sold to companies like BlackRock, where they will just absorb that inventory and those houses will never be sold back into the retail market. So I don't think this is going to create a possible housing crash, but it is going to certainly create further lack of inventory and then which will drive the price pressures up. What is the relevancy in Canada? Well, I don't think there is any immediate impact uh, on the Canadian US market because the market here is already frothy and we are seeing some rate hikes coming up sometime April next year. We don't know how much rate is going to be uh, increased for, but of course it's going to be in different stages, right? And uh, this may have a, a little bit you know, slowdown effect in terms of housing activity, but I don't see any major uh, negative price pressure coming into the real estate market in Canada because of rate hikes. Um, because what's happening around the globe in terms of the financial world and the economy, they are really struggling to keep the economy, you know, growing and, and, and positive. And any rate hike will have a potential negative impact on the economy. We have to carefully see how these rate hikes will play out in terms of the economic growth. And as soon as we see any negative growth or negative consequences, the bank will, the central bank will come in and intervene and again, do some measures like decrease the rate again and start QE program to finance the, the government debt. Just wanted to share with you to demystify these, these confusions and myths that this is a, a failure of the business model. It's not going to possibly create a housing crash. It may cause an affordability crisis because now the houses will be sold to these big corporations, will not be sold back into the retail market, which will cause a lack of inventory and perhaps a more uh, price acceleration coming soon. So I hope this is helpful. If you like it, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you in my next week video. Take care.